Okay, so great. So welcome to the um, Bio 171 Labs. And today we'll be looking specifically at that which is expected of you in terms of knowledge base as related to the upcoming spotter assessment. All right, but with all this concern, I think I sent you a plethora of information concerning what should be looked at, yeah? Yes, sir. I send some information in the chat. So I think you will be, if you do follow those things, I think you'll be well placed. When you're, just to piggyback on what was said, you know, in terms of within the chat, I'll, let me pull it up real quick. Um, biology 171, where are you? There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go, right. So images, notice I said, you know, images concerning body sections, cell cycle, tissue type, major bones of the body, bones of the skull, frontal parietal occipital, bones of the face, of the vertebra, and the labeling of our microscope. All right, so let's start. Let's start from, from simple and bring it up. So for the organization of the body with this one, right, you'd have to have a look at knowing those, uh, the different parts, that is important. The different um, body cavities, uh, you should be able to label those things if presented with it on a diagram. So with this assessment, what you'll be getting, you'll be getting a lot of images with the lab. You know, a lot of images, nothing to be written. Everything would be drop down menu. It's choose, you have to choose the answers, All right? So choose the answers, you know, so they'll have like on the E, when you click on E, it has like four options, you know, you choose one and so on. So nothing to be written, nothing to be typed in, right? It's just click, 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 click from different menus. That's how it works, All right? So for this one, for the organization of the body, um, the sections, um, so the different sections as it relates to the abdominal cavities themselves, that is important. Let me see if I could show it to you here, since we have it already uh, presented. Let's pull it up. With the cell cycle, what is important to know, just remember, um, we'll be looking at mitosis in terms of the cell division. So the primary divisions are, uh, interphase, well, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And a little FYI, usually the one image that is of vital importance is two. Two images out of those, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. It's usually metaphase, metaphase because they are lined up in the middle. And well, metaphase, anaphase is sometimes a little difficult because metaphase and telophase. Metaphase, they're lined up in the middle with telophase what you see, they begin to pinch off. So you, when you look at the membrane, it looks like, you know, and uh, it, be, it begins to sink in, you know, because they're looking to form two separate cells. And that's why you could tell telophase. So in terms of the five phases, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, always place emphasis. Know, the, know, know to, to see what they look like, but always put emphasis on metaphase and anaphase, all right? All right, so here we're looking at parts of the torso. Yes, um, all of these things, the parts of the human torso. Yes, you would look at this in more detail. For instance, in this, you look more at this in SNF2, in terms of all of these veins, arteries associated with the organs themselves, right? So the directional terms, this, so pay attention to this slide, you know, just to take note of the directional terms. So this one is important. With the planes, so this one, take note of the frontal and sagittal plane. And also, you see this image here, the transverse section. Uh, just, just remember this, you might see this one again. Uh, if you do see it, you know, you should be able to recognize that the transverse section through the torso and showing the different structures, this cord, spleen, stomach, and liver. So for this, for the body planes, note sagittal, of course, sagittal frontal comes this way. Uh, sagittal is, goes from back to forth, back to forward, frontal goes across, 
and also pay attention to this section in this section, the transverse section, because you just might see this one again. With the cavities, right, the major ones, the cranial, the spinal, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic cavity, which consists of these two parts. Um, the membranes, no, right? So, so that's it in terms of, of course, everything is, could be broad, but if I were to put emphasis, I guess highlighting certain things, which I believe you should put a little more emphasis on during your revision process, okay? Let's look at the next one. So that's it for the organization of the human body. Next one is microscopy. Very simple people, you know, as mentioned there as well, I'll just say it again, know how to label a microscope. Right? That part is really important, the labeling of a microscope. So just a simple light microscope, the different parts of the microscope. So let's spend a little time on that. Um, you're almost assured a question is gonna come there. Um, phases of mitosis, no, this is a, um, uh, a, a, um, is a video, so we don't have to go there, right? Don't have to visit that, sorry. Oops. Oops, right, right. So the microscopy, let's have a look. Oh, I say already, oh, let me open it. So I mentioned as well with the cell, the phases of mitosis, do not, um, interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, pay attention to metaphase and anaphase. Um, telophase, uh, metaphase and telophase, sorry. Those are the two major ones you should pay attention to as how to be able to recognize them by sight when you see them, okay? All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm just waiting for the PowerPoint to come up. The next one, of course, tissues and integumentary system. Let me just point to that. And for the tissues, of course, the major tissue types. I'm just waiting for it to come up. And as soon as it loads up, I will talk to it. It just doesn't want to come up. Maybe it's um, I just don't know why. Come on, come on. Okay, so in looking, okay, we don't need this one. Come on, right? So when you're looking at this, this Pay attention to this diagram here. So if you're speaking, I'm not hearing you. Oh, yes. So 
you have the membrane and then you have the nucleus and the cytoplasm has a liquid portion which allows the or suspends the different parts of the cell itself okay so it's always important to keep these parts in mind when you're actually um, revising it okay and then you have um, So I think the mic come up again. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just, is the mic sometimes give a little, I inadvertently press the mute button. Mm, yeah, I have to, maybe I should tape it to the, to the side or something like that. So the structure of the cell here, yeah, do have the major portions. You don't have to get into the Nucleo, the nucleolus and so on. But I just know the nucleus is in the center of the cell and the presence of the plasma membrane. So mainly this diagram is the main one you should focus on. Um, you should know the functions of the different organelles, what they do. All right. So just pay attention. And that would be the last thing to know really on this chapter. All right. Um, well, cell division, we mentioned mitosis. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't, these are onion cell, but yeah, you shouldn't pay too much mind on that one. Transport, diffusion. This cell with the red blood cell, yeah, you should just spend a little time in terms of identifying which one is height, which, what does it look like in a hypertonic medium? Hyper means that sugar is high and the water level is low, right? So how, um, in terms of, how things would move. So we're talking, when I say hypotonic, the external medium, high in sugar, low in water. So how things move, it moves from the cell. It moves from the cell to the external environment and the cell shrinks. Hypotonic, hypo means below. That means you have low sugar and a lot of water. So the concentration of water is much higher than that inside of the cell. So things you'll have osmosis occurring of water moving from the external environment area of high water concentration to the relatively low water concentration inside of the cell. So it swells, all right? And um, that's, a, that's it for this, for that chapter. That's it on that one. So that's the microscope. That's, um, which ones we looked at so far? Organization of the human body, microscope and the cell. Now let's have a look at tissues. Let's speak to that. And then this is the axial and, and that would be the last of the lot. Yeah. So that's, I'll just reiterate what I mentioned before in terms of sending it to you, what I sent in the chat. Let's have a look at this tissues and the integumentary system. Integumentary system of our skin here, nails not exclusively just the skin, even though that is the major one. Most definitely cross-section through the skin, you should be able to label it, right? So two, you know, the, the cross-section uh, through the skin showing the epidermis, dermis, and all of the structures found within the dermis itself. All right, so do pay attention on that one in terms of labeling those structures found across the skin. And it's, it's virtually, there's almost a, at a high degree of certainty, you will see an image coming showing the cross section of the skin. Yeah. All right. So do pay attention to the skin. Always comes, always, in terms of a labeling diagram. All right. Come on. Get up. Come on. Why it is taking so long? Need to get a faster computer. Or just take a lot of things off of the drive. Maybe the desktop. Maybe I have too many things on the desktop. It's slowing down the processor speed. So when you save the recordings, you would save it to the desktop? Mm, 
I, I set it up to me. I'll have to revisit it. I set it up. So I have an external hard drive. I have it set up, I believe, to go to the external hard drive. I will double check that sometime, you know, is make a duplicate copy. So that could possibly be slowing it down if it's on the desktop, all those recordings. Yeah, so possibly. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so um, tissues, right, and the integumentary, yeah, images from here. All right, so if you're shown this, you should be able to identify it by sight. That's the main thing with these. So simple cuboidal, business based on sight, simple squamous, stratified, and right, stratified layer. Yeah, I would just say these by sight, simple columnar, you know the columns. And if you're given these, yeah, it would have this marking. So you should be able, the pseudo stratified, right, which it does give the impression of one, but it's really multiple layers. And of course, transitional. What, when you hear the word transitional, what organ or what structure anybody should come to mind? The bladder. Always remember that. From the time you hear transitional, the first thing could bladder, bladder, right? They go together. Transitional, bladder. As soon as you hear transitional epithelium as the first, first thing, because that is usually granted, the ureters have it as well, but most definitely the bladder is always a question. So remember that, you might see it again. Transitional epithelium, where would you find it? Bladder. All right. You might see this again. All right, connective um, areola, again, by sight, to be able to identify these. So a good thing to do, a good practice, is when you're going it over, just cover this up. Or, for those of us adventurous, let's copy and paste all of the, these slides, you know, in a PowerPoint with no labels, and see how well you can do, yeah? And, of course, adipocytes are very easy to recognize. Um, dense connective, no. Irregular, no. Hyaline, no. Wouldn't go to cartilage, no. Nope. All right. Muscle, yeah. You should be able to. These. So skeletal, these three types. There's only three types of muscle. Skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. One of the ways to identify cardiac is these lines. See them here? These are the intercalated discs. And what they do, they help... Um, they allow the transfer of electrical uh, impulse that comes from the SA node to spread rapidly through the heart. So you see these perpendicular lines? I don't know if you're all seeing it, yes? You all seeing them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I could do. I could do. Let me see. All right, so most importantly, yeah. So what these do, as shown here, they're very important for and it is a nice way of actually identifying cardiac because one of the things with cardiac and skeletal when you say well it kind of these two they could kind of look the same you could argue yes sir. yeah you might you might argue and one of the ways to tell the difference is that boom you look for this darker line and from the time you see you know these you'll see them at intervals you know straight away that is cardiac so it's pink they both stay in pink, right? And once you see the perpendicular lines, you know, then it's cardiac. Skeletal have multi is multi-nucleated uh, muscle fibers. And then smooth, but smooth has its own. Smooth muscle, it's unique. And these are found, where would you find smooth muscle? Hmm, find it in your gut. And that is used to propel the fool along. Uh, that comes under the autonomic nervous system because we don't even think about it and the food moves from mouth. Well, once you swallow, it goes all the way down to the uh, um, anus. And that's it for that one. So the last one we want to look at is skeletal system. So you're talking? 
by chance? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> no, and it's, you're, you're right to ask because I did have some time when I just hit the button. But no, I was just waiting for this to come up. And is this, yeah, it's special. It's special. I, feel, I don't think it's your computer. I think it's the internet. Home by us too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we get the same thing. My son had same exams. Thing. And mm -hmm. the reason I, when I did, um, I did, um, psychology exam or day it was the mm. whole thing for the internet was slow oh, the Lord. questions was loading all kind of thing and at 35 minutes i'll keep you know i'll keep that in mind like as i say when i'm finished with you all here i'm going to talk with the course coordinator dr sata and um i will mention all of those things to see if we can give you all more wiggle room where that is concerned okay all right so skeleton uh, some of the functions. So take note of the skeleton, skeletal functions. In terms of labeling the major parts, so you don't have to get into um, all of these here, but do take note of these on this side. The proximal epiphysis, the metaphysis, diaphysis, and well, distal diaphysis, sorry, distal epiphysis. So just these labels on the right side. Um, once you see this, this image, notice compact bone, is look like what? Pothole on a road or something like that. Ants walking around the potholes. As I mentioned to you, this is the only slide that they use iodine to dye, to dye it with, to give it a color. So usually it appears black. All right. So once you see, is, and it's the only slide that looks like this, where you have these holes with these things like ants walking around them. From the time you see it, it's compact bone. That is what it looks like in section. So what they really do is they went through bone with a saw. And that's how they get this section. You know, a nice clean section. Spongy bone, yeah. Again, just recognize it by sight. So the two types, compact bone with these circles and spongy bone. All right. The joints of the skull, and we have the lamina. Um, the P stands for the parietal, parietal bones, and then the occipital bone. Because I always say the ox is in the back thing about a, a, a cow or an ox, and it has a tail. So you know the occipital comes from the back. Fontanelles, doubt you'll get a question from that. I don't remember, I don't recall anything with fontanelles, no. But with the skull, as I mentioned, the bones of the skull. Um, yeah, these bones, take note. Not these on this side, except the man, well, of course, the mandible, mandible and the maxilla. Um, nothing else here, but those on this side, take note of those, uh, these bones on this side. So the nasal bone, the lacrimal, ethmoid, sphenoid, temporal, the zygomatic, that is a cheekbone, zygomatic, and the maxilla, of course, on the top, mandible, because men have beards. The mandible is below. All right, so take note of this one and these structures there. Mm, with this one, really, the only open, there's the foramen magnum. There's a big old, what goes down here? If I were to ask you, what goes down here? What would you say? The spine, sir. Correct, is right. Yeah, the spinal cord. Right, so this is you're looking down as you see here. It's like yes, take the bone, so you go right through and you're looking down the skull. So you know, the spine, it, sir. Yeah, yeah, your spine goes through there, very true, very good. That's where your spine goes down. So that's why, you know, oftentimes whenever they show you your brain and your spine, they show them separately. But in truth, in fact, it's like a long tail. Think about your brain with a tail. And there's a the hole for the tail to go down. It runs through the vertebra all the way down, right? So it runs all the way down from here, C1 and C2. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. It was the axial and the axis, right? Correct. So the one on top, the, remember the little story about the naughty man? He did something a little naughty. So they had him lifting up the world for all eternity. And his name was Atlas. So that's the Atlas vertebra, C1. And the one below it that enables your head. You could call that one the macro vertebra, enable you to macro. You know, when somebody passes, or you just look to the left or look to the right. There's the one that causes your whole head to pivot, the C2 vertebra. And that is the axis. So please don't write macro vertebra or look for it. You will not see it as an answer option. The correct name is the axis vertebra, C1 and C2. In fact, those are the only two that have specific names. So take note of them, C1, C2, top one. This one is Atlas, the naughty man holding up the world. And C2 is the axis. This is pivot. 
This is where things spin on, okay? Great. Vertebra, mm, no, nothing, nope. Thoracic cage, yeah. Pay attention to this one. In terms of the true ribs, false ribs, and your floating ribs, we have 12, seven, three, two. All right, seven, three, two. And the reason why the two, they're not attached to anything. Your ribs are normally attached to the sternum by a cartilage. The false ribs, they're attached to the cartilage, which are attached. The cartilage that comes from the two ribs, they're attached to that. And then by extension, they're attached to the, um, the sternum. So they're not directly attached, but they're attached to cartilage that is then attached to the sternum. So that's why they call them false ribs. And then the floating ribs, they're not attached to anything. Except, of course, all of them are attached to the vertebral column, right? So in the back, they're attached there, but to the front, the floating ribs, they don't, they just float. And that's it, all right? So in your revision, yes, everything is, um, everything is, is fair game, but the things I highlighted, you should pay a little more attention to. We good? Everybody good? Yes, yes thank you. Jordan. What is that? When you're putting up this recording. All right, let me sense? stop it. Let me stop it. Um, stop sharing. Let me stop the recording. Let me stop the recording.